Some version of the 1451 progression can be found all over Western music, from classical music to country to rock to pop to jazz to musical theater. In this video, we're going to look at how we can voice lead a 1451 progression on the piano so that it sounds nice and smooth, and we can use that to accompany ourselves better. <laughs> Hi guys, Elizabeth Loninger here. So let's dive into the 1-4-5-1 progression. What does it sound like? So when we are using only chords in root position, meaning the chords as they are stacked on top of each scale degree of the major scale, on the first, fourth, fifth, and back to first scale degree, that would sound like this. It's a bit jumpy, jumps around a little bit much. You may have heard it in some, some dance tracks where they go like... But when we accompany ourselves, we want everything to be a bit smoother and easier. So if we're voice leading this, it sounds like this. So there are two main rules of voice leading that are at work here. The first rule is that common tones, meaning a tone that is shared from one chord to the next, stay in the same part. So for instance, what I just did from C major, from the one chord to the four chord, we have a C major triad, that's C, E, and G, going up to the F major triad, that is F, A, and C. So you see we have C as the common pitch here. On the root position chord, C stays in the bottom, right? And then we have E and G. And then instead of jumping up and staying in root position in the root third and fifth format, we keep the C where it was and instead we're moving the other fingers so C stays where it is, we're going from here to here. And the bass moves from the one to the four. So that's the first rule that applies. The second rule that applies is counter movement. What I mean by that in its most fundamental way is as the bass moves up, the top part or even the entire top chord moves down. So they are moving kind of against each other. So for, for instance, in this case, from the four to the five, I'm going up. So in the right hand, I'm actually going down, right? Whereas in the left hand, I'm going up from the four to the five. And because we don't have any common tones between the fourth chord and the fifth chord, right? So let's just check in with that if that is correct what I'm saying here. So F is F, A, C. And then the fifth chord, based on the fifth scale degree, is G, B, D. So you see there's nothing overlapping here. So when there is no common tone, then the counter movement rule applies. So we have from the F major to the G major, we're going down. And then from the fifth scale degree to the first scale degree again, we have a common tone. The triad on the fifth scale degree is in this case G major because we're in C major. So G, B, and D. And the one triad or the tonic triad is C, E, G. So G is our common pitch, right? Now we were just here, right? G was on the top and it'll stay on the top. So you'll also notice that in a one four five one cadenza, usually, unless you want to change it up, the one chord at the beginning is in the same position or inversion as in the end. 
Now this is what I would call a root position cadenza because we're starting in root position and by root position I mean the root is on the bottom and then we're stacking the third and the fifth on top of it. So we're stacking thirds on top of each other. In first inversion, we're starting with the first inversion triad. What do I mean by first inversion triad? Good question. So what you do is you grab the root and you just push it up an octave. So the root of a first inversion triad is at the top. But other than that, the same rules apply. So for instance, we're going from the one chord to the four chord. We still have the same pitches. They're just inverted. So we still have C, E, G, but the order is changed. The order now is E, G, C, with C on top. And then we're going to the four chord, which is F, A, C, with C on top. So you see the same pitch stays in the same part. And then again, from the four chord to the five chord, there is no common tone. So we're going into counter movement. So this is your G chord inverted. Again, the order is slightly different. We have D, G, B. And G is now in the middle. And G is still our common tone between the five chord and the one chord, and it will stay in the middle. So the outer voices have to move. Right? So that would be your first inversion cadenza. And then you can invert it again. Now we're grabbing the third, or E in this case, and put that up an octave. Whoop. And again, same rules apply. So now the root of the second inversion triad is in the middle. This is your root. And we're going up to from C major to F major. C stays in the middle. It's the common tone. It stays right there. Everything else has to move. Right? One, four. And again, having to go down to the fifth chord. G is now at the bottom, and G is our common tone between the five chord and the one chord. And it stays right there. So the top voices have to move. So let me play all three of these cadenzas back to back so you can hear the difference here. One, four, five, one in root position sounds like this. In first inversion, again grabbing the C up an octave, sounds like this. And again, second inversion, grabbing the bottom pitch of that triad up an octave. So why would I want to invert a cadenza? The thing is, when you are accompanying yourself, there's a kind of rule of thumb where you always want to be around middle C because that kind of works best with the voice where it's not too high and not too low and also with the instrument so that it doesn't sound too muddy or too shrilly. The other thing is that you're going to sing songs in different keys. Not everything is going to be in C. So let's say you are in the key of G major, right? And that's a little bit muddy so I might want to invert that and start here. away with this. It's a bit borderline. F is even more. Here now C is on the top so that's definitely too muddy so I would definitely invert that and start here. Right? Now returning to C major, simple accompaniment for let's say Amazing Grace for instance. Now Amazing Grace is basically one four five one with slight variations. So let's hear that. 
Amazing Grace starts with a one chord, then we're doing an inversion. I'm not going to go too deep into that, but it's essentially still a one chord. Going into the four chord, back to the one chord. And then one, staying on the one, going to the five, back to the one, inversion of the one, four chord, one. Now we're going to go to the six. So there's a little bit more here, but in essence, the foundation, the structure that the whole accompaniment is hung up on, in essence, is the 1451 cadenza. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to this channel and also head on over to vocalmusician.org for a free video on my favorite vocal warm-ups. I will post the link in the comment section below. See you next time. Hey, hey.